Okay, this is Dr. Morton uh, dictating the or uh, recording the uh, the lecture for Wednesday, the fourth of November. Um, okay, so here's the syllabus. Uh, we'll just cruise down to the end. And again, we're we're in week. Uh, we're in November second through sixth, week eleven. Hard to believe. Uh, this it's coming to an end. Notice uh, homework nine is due on Friday, so make sure you're working on homework nine due on Friday. Um, remember, make sure you're doing the quizzes after the lectures this week. There was one on Monday, there'll be one today, or, and there'll be one on Friday. Make sure you're doing those before Saturday at midnight. And if you can't see them, uh, either get help from the Blackboard people or you can let me know, although I probably can't fix it because I, I you know, once I put them on Blackboard, I expect Blackboard to work correctly. But I, I do know there are some browser issues. Do not use Internet Explorer. Um, you should use Firefox or Chrome. I think those are the two main ones. Uh, Edge may be okay, I don't know, but I know Firefox and Chrome are fine. So if you're getting funny results and you're using Internet Explorer, stop. Do something else. Okay, so Today we're going to finish unit uh, 12, um, and uh, and then on Friday we'll start on 13. All right. So here's where we left off on unit 12. Uh, we're going to talk about the code converter problem, and uh, this is this is a uh, BCD to XS3 conversion. Now, uh, the uh, the XS3 was just another was kind of another way to do binary code a decimal basically uh, and it is kind of it's kind of goofy you know what I think I'm gonna pull that curtain down let me just do that real quick here so this is gonna use uh, four JK flip-flops and uh, the binary coded number is preloaded into the flip-flops now interestingly we've already worked this problem one time with a combinational design you can you can have it set up so you present the BCD at one end of a network, all combinational, no state machine involved, and then you can immediately output the XS3 code. Okay, now we're going to do it a little bit differently. Now we're going to do it, we're actually going to do it, I think, two, maybe even three different ways uh, with a sequential design. The first thing we're going to do is this one. And now the way this one works, we preload the BCD number into, into some flip-flops. Okay, so, so the way, again, it preloads the BCD number into the four flip-flops, because it's a four-bit number, and there's no preloading circuit provided. So you just have to imagine it. We've ghosted that, which is, actually, I hate that, but that's how it is, and so uh, that's how the book defines it. So, so then what you're supposed to do is, given that you have a BCD number preloaded in the flip-flop, you have one clock pulse comes in, and now the flip-flop changes, and what the flip-flop is outputting is the XS3 code for the BCD code that was preloaded through some unknown mechanism. Uh, loaded through some unknown mechanism, we're going to know the mechanism that converts it to XS3. We're going to design that mechanism. All right, so, so we come up with a state table, with present and next dates, and then we're going to use the four JK flip-flops. So now we have to use extra columns in our state table, and then we have to plot the input maps. And uh, and then what's going to happen here? We're going to we're not going to use the shortcut method that the book describes because it's too confusing. So we're going to generate extra columns. Now we have four flip-flops. How many extra columns do we have to have? Eight, that is correct, because you have to have two for each flip-flop, because you have to deal with a J input and a K input for each flip-flop. Okay, now if you think about it, this is another example of a problem with no input. There's really no input to our network. We have this magical uh, appearance in our flip-flops of a BCD value, and then we just have to have uh, we just have to then design a circuitry that if you loaded that in and then you tick the clock one time 
you would convert to the, the XS3 code. Stored in the same flip-flops now. All right, so so how does this work? Well, so we're going to use the we're so we're going to so here's our truth table. Now, if you think about it, so if we have the number zero loaded in the flip-flop, the four flip-flops, we would want the number three to come out on the next clock cycle. So that would be our desired next state. So present state zero, desired next state three. Present state one, desired next state four, because we're going to add three. That's the XS3 code. And so forth until we get down to present state nine, desired next state C. And then we're done, and everything else from nine on, or from 10 on, A, B, C, D, E, F is all don't cares. Okay, now notice over here, we have already laid out our uh, J and K for the flip flop A, for flip flop B for flip-flop C, and for flip-flop D. And here's our little guide for JK flip-flops. Now notice every line's got a don't care, right? So if, if we're going from zero to zero, the J has to be zero, K is a don't care. If, if we're present state of Q is zero and our next state is one, then we do JK one zero, one, one don't care. And if we're going one to zero, it's don't care one. And if we're holding at one, it's don't care zero. All right, so now, Let's look at this. So A is going from 0 to 0. So that would be 0, don't care. 0, don't care. Now B, we're going from 0 to 0. Same thing. 0, don't care for J, B, and K, B. Now from C, we're going from 0 to 1. So 0 to 1, that would be 1 for J and don't care for K. So our J, C is a 1 and our K, C is don't care. And then finally, uh, 0 to 1, same thing. So JD is 1 and our KD is don't care. And that's what we do for every single one of these rows. And then we do don't cares for all these. And when we're all said and done, then we, we have a truth table that looks like this. Now you, what I encourage you to do is take a minute and just look at this and, uh, and make sure that you understand, you know, pause the video and just try and mentally do, okay, what would I do for uh, A0, B1, C0, D1? Well, uh, so I'm going 0 to 1, so that's 1x. I'm going from 1 to 0, so that's x1. 1 to 0, x1, and 0 to 1, 1x, one or whichever one. I might have skipped one here, but whichever one. Just go through and compare and make sure that you can justify the way these are set up. Okay, so now that we have this, all we have to do is we need a K map for JA, a K map for KA, a K map for JB, a K map for KB, and so forth. Now, the question you should ask yourself what are the independent variables for our K map? Well, the independent variables are our current states of ABCD, our, our present state. There's no input, so we don't have any X's for the input to deal with. So we just have A, B, C, D. So, so we should have a four variable K map, which means we need 16 values to put in there. Well, we have 10 here, and then the six don't cares. Uh, and of course, there's a bunch of don't cares here because of just uh, we have the, all these don't cares up here in our uh, uh, in, in our in our little. Uh, truth table that tells us how we go from Q to Q to, to next Q. All right. So anyway, so our first one's going to be we're going to have zero 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 in the first column, zero one 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 in the next, and then don't cares for all the rest of it. All right. So same thing for all these. Let's look. So you can see um, here we have two overlapping chunks here so that would be bc and bd here the whole freaking thing is zero so we just put ka to ground so that's ja and ka jb and kb c and d there's c or sorry d and there's c and then here we have c and d as well Exactly the same. All right. 
here's D prime and D prime. And here's the whole thing is one. And so that's all that's the that's our eight K maps. All right, so now I didn't draw the circuit, but you can see the the D flip flop, we have J and K both tied to one. So how what's that gonna fl flip flop gonna do? It's gonna toggle every single time. Okay? This one is just D prime, so it's always going to be the opposite of D. Which is kind of interesting, actually. Um, well, so it's so basically it's going to hold. I don't know. This this looks goofy, um, but I guess that's what it came out. Yeah. And then this one's just one. So, and here we have uh, C plus D, and here we have something a little more complicated for KA, for JA, BC plus BD, and KA is just tied to ground. And that's it. Okay. All right. So I didn't draw the circuit, but that would be it. Okay, so groups of flip-flop for storage and changing binary numbers. Design the network. Um, so it's a shift register then. So, so what is a shift register? So again, all registers, you can think of them basically as just a set of flip-flops. And uh, a shift register then is just a bunch of flip-flops that uh, we have all lined up. And what we can do with a clock, we can move all the bits to the left one place are all the bits to the right one place and we can do each time the clock ticks we can move them we can move them um, now it turns out that uh, if you had like a 32-bit shift register and you wanted to shift it 15 to the left that's a lot of clock cycles so what actually uh, gets done in most real-world shift registers is we use what's called a barrel shifter which basically can shift any X number of places in uh, instantly, or sometimes it's sometimes we, we we do what's called rotate. Sometimes we do what's called shift. Sometimes we do what's called uh, logical shift, and and then also sometimes we do arithmetic shift. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that right now, but but shifting can be sort of complicated, and when it's really implemented, we'll often implement it with a barrel shifter that can that can that only takes one clock cycle to do an arbitrary number of shifts. Okay, um, so, so we're gonna design a little shift register here. So we have a little network. We're gonna set up a state table with present and next states. We'll add the JK inputs as required and plot the maps. Okay, so um, a shift register could be any number of bits, but usually it's, it's a, usually eight, 16 or 32 or 64 and it's useful for certain math and data functions when you shift left you're effectively multiplying it by two when you shift right you're effectively dividing it by two so anytime you're dividing or multiplying by a power of two you should never use multiplication or division you should only use shifting because it's much much more efficient and uh and so that's really a, an important thing. And if there's some way we can manipulate your calculation so that you can get to a power of two instead, then you should definitely do that because it's so much more efficient to, sh to shift than it is to uh, actually multiply or divide. Now, uh, we can shift bits in a circle, which we call rotate. We can, uh, we can discard or test, and we can shift in the same bit or zeros or ones. When we shift logically, we usually just shift in zeros. If we shift right, we shift in zeros uh, at the upper end. If we shift left, we shift in zeros at the lower end. When we shift logical, when we shift arithmetically, we usually try and match the higher order bit when we shift right. We'll shift in bits that are the same as the higher order bit. So if the higher order bit's one, we'll shift in ones. If the higher order bit is a zero, we'll shift in zeros. And the whole idea that if it's a two's complement number, then what we're doing is 
preserving the sign of the number. On the other hand, if it's uh, if it's uh, unsigned, then we'll usually shift in zeros when we shift right and left. Now, in for some reason in Verilog, when we do a logical shift left, or an, sorry, an arithmetic shift left, we replicate the low order bit. I have no idea why we do that. That seems to me to be goofball, but that's how it does in Verilog. So, so keep in mind that you might have to just check the specifics of a shifting operation. Okay. Uh, when we rotate, we can rotate through a carry bit, or we can just end around rotate, and 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 also replicate the shifted out bit in the carry. So there's various ways to do rotations. Uh, some microprocessors rotate through carry, some don't, uh, and some use and some replicate the rotate a bit in carry, but but don't, uh, but they shift it end around. Um, okay. So normally when we construct it with flip-flops, our output goes to the input of the next flip-flop, depending on which way we're shifting. Um, a, a more complicated design allows us to shift in either direction, and an even more complicated design uh, lets us do this barrel shift, where we can shift an arbitrary number of bits in a single step. And that's much more efficient. If you have a 64-bit shift register, and you want to shift uh, 63 bits left, or, well, that's kind of crazy, but let's say you just wanted to shift 20 bits left or 20 bits right. That's still very, very time consuming compared to doing it in one clock cycle. All right, so here's what a shift register looks like. Uh, and you can see that we have uh, uh, active low sets and active low resets here. These are pulled up. These are, these are, these are, uh, uh, these resets are all tied to a reset line. And, uh, and then the first input is also tied to that reset line. Kind of interesting. And then these three are just pulled up. So, um, all right. So, so that's what a shift register looks like. And notice how in this case, so look at this. Is this, is this shift register set up to shift right or left? Because this would be the high order bit here, next, next, low order bit. So which is it set up to do, shift right or left? Well, the output of this flip-flop goes to the inputs of this one. And notice how we have Q going to J and Q prime going to K. Uh, you can't, yeah, you can, this is implied by the bubble there. It's kind of a, I think that's a bad notation, but that's how that was. And the whole idea is then every time the clock ticks, whatever's in this, whatever's in this flip flop, becomes this. This one becomes this. This one becomes this, and this one flips around and becomes this. So it this would be a rotate operation, and it would be rotate right. It's not set up to rotate the other way. All right. So um, I think that's pretty much uh, what I wanted you to get out of this. Um, you should you should know how to use uh, each of the flip flops, so you kind of need to memorize kind of these characteristic equations or well the, the 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 input equations, but it's actually pretty easy. You just have to remember that d whatever the d input is that's what q that's what next state of q is going to be. For the t it's either going to toggle or hold, and for the j k it's either going to hold or toggle. Or it's going to set or clear. So it sort of works like both a D and a T. So you have to pay a little more attention to that. All right. And I think that's it. All right. I think I'm going to uh, we'll just let this be a shorter lecture. We just wanted to finish up Unit 12. Um, and um, so I will. Uh, so we don't have anything uh, except for just uh, finishing up a few more chapters in the book and uh, working on some of our sequential design skills. And we're, we're definitely going to work on that. We're going to do plenty of review. You're going to be good at it when we uh, go to the final. When you do the final, I want you to bear in mind, you need to be able to do a sequential design problem. So you need to study until you're comfortable doing them. And then you need to be familiar with some of the other topics we've covered so you can answer those questions as well. But you definitely need to be able to do a sequential design problem. 
So we'll we'll work through a few. When the hard part of a sequential design problem is getting the 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 state graph or the SM chart, which we haven't covered yet, but we will, getting the state graph or the state of the SM chart correct. And once you get that correct, then the rest of the design is just falling off a log. It's just chug, you know plug and chug. But if you're confused about how to get to that point, then it can be rather challenging. All right. Well, with that, we'll, we'll sign off, and I will see you back on Friday. And uh, I may try and do a help session on Friday. We'll see, because um, I didn't do one on Monday.